The aim of this film is to help and ensure that you're fully prepared and aware of the skills and standards required to pass this amateur rider's Category A assessment and to be recommended to the BHA for the issue of a Category A permit. It's been produced by the BHA, the British Horse Racing Authority, with help from the British Racing School and the Northern Racing College. Both the training and assessment are mandatory. The training includes presentations and lectures with specific information for you as an amateur jockey. They'll be coaching on a simulator related to riding a finish. There'll be advice on starting stalls procedures and schooling over race type obstacles. But remember, this training is simply preparation for your assessment by a qualified jockey coach. Your riding assessment is filmed throughout for review and analysis. In the next few minutes, we'll explain what's involved in that appraisal. To apply for the training and assessment, you'll need an application form which is available from either of the racing schools. It's straightforward and should be returned to the school which issued it. Please select your preferred training and assessment dates from the school's websites. It's crucial that you've had previous experience relevant to the type of permit that you're seeking, whether for national hunt racing, flat racing or a dual permit, which allows you to ride under both codes. There are a couple of sections on the form of special importance around details of your previous riding experience, including how long you've been riding, are you riding out or in full-time employment with a registered trainer, have you attended either of the racing schools at any time in the past? Have you held any other riding license or permit in the past? Have you got any competitive riding experience like point-to-point -point or pony racing? You'll also need to submit a reference from a licensed trainer or permit holder who's seen you ride in the disciplines on which you'll be assessed. This is a necessary safeguarding procedure and helps with the assessment process. The riding assessment starts with you being observed, getting your horse ready to be ridden. Brushing mane and tail. Tacking up and presenting your horse well. Picking out its feet before you pull out to ride. Once mounted, you'll be asked to carry out some very basic steps to demonstrate that you're in control of your horse at all times. That you're comfortable riding out in a string that's one behind the other and correctly spaced out that you're competent in some basic warming up exercises like riding at a trot. This will give your assessor the opportunity to see that you are safe and in control before moving on to riding at a faster pace, either at a canter or gallop. If your assessor is happy, you'll be asked to canter, again spaced out appropriately in a string, showing control and understanding the pace required. You may also be asked to ride upsides, one horse beside another, again maintaining control, showing your technique and ability to ride at a regulated pace. If you're taking the flat racing element of the assessment, you'll be briefed on all the stall's procedures that you'll both need to know and follow throughout this specialised discipline. You'll need to demonstrate a full understanding of these procedures. You must be competent in allowing your horse to jump out of the stalls without hindering its stride, stay in balance with the horse, maintaining a straight line, yet be aware of other horses and riders around you. You'll be required to do this in pairs and in groups of four or more. If it's the National Hunt Assessment, you'll be required to school over obstacles and again, you'll be fully briefed on what's needed. You will have to demonstrate that you are proficient in riding in a balanced position into, over and after a fence without disturbing the horse's natural ability. You should be able to present a horse to a fence correctly balanced at the right pace and in line. If appropriate, you should express a feel for what is a good stride and correct your horse if on the wrong stride. You should move the horse away from the fence in a balanced and effective way. Again, you'll be required to do this in a string and in pairs. All the horses used for these specialised disciplines, both stalls work and jumping, are experienced. To demonstrate an acceptable level of proficiency in them, you'll have to apply certain skills and techniques gained through your previous experience.
After you've finished your practical riding, you'll be observed as you return to the stable, loosening your girths and allowing your mount to wind down. Once back at the yard, you'll be expected to take your tack off correctly, attend to your horse and complete necessary grooming and sponging down to make your horse comfortable. During this training, you'll be coached on how to use the simulator. This will include sessions where you'll be advised on the skills and techniques you should adopt and develop for your simulator assessment. The aim is to give you the best possible opportunity to show your skills and offer a much better chance of passing this part of your assessment. Your simulator assessment is one of the key elements to being recommended for a permit. Therefore, it's essential that you've had some previous simulator experience prior to your assessment. What are the assessors looking for? A balanced body position, an effective pushing technique, a demonstration of whip skills. This will include changing your hands, pulling the whip through from one hand to the other, and using the whip in both hands in the backhand and forehand positions. To be competitive as a rider, overall general fitness is essential. As part of your fitness test, you will be asked in one of the simulator sessions to push and stay in balance for as long as possible, whilst correctly using your whip. The longer you can maintain your pushing technique and other skills, will go towards your overall fitness score and percentage. 19, last one, and you're sitting down, and sit. The gym-based physical exercises have been developed to be relevant to you as a rider. They demand an acceptable level of agility, strength, timing and endurance. Full details are on both of the racing school's websites and the addresses will follow shortly. Yeah, walking the course, really important. It's expected that you'll have done some homework around important elements of racing knowledge. This will be enhanced through standardised lectures on the rules and regulations, integrity and race course procedures relevant to you as an amateur rider, which will be given at your assessment training day. Some of the information is available online, so access to a computer with internet capabilities is a must. The knowledge and information that you should already have or gain through the presentations and online learning will be tested in a multiple choice exam paper as part of your assessment. If it comes over your chin, it's too loose, it's absolutely pointless you're having an helmet on. Riding in a race can be the thrill and experience of a lifetime. So whether you're hoping to ride your own horse or thinking of using the amateur route to create a pathway for a long-term career in the saddle, we hope that this information will give you an insight into the necessary skills, techniques and commitment required to obtain your amateur rider's permit to ride under the rules of racing. We wish you the very best of luck in your quest to be recommended for an amateur rider's permit and here are those all-important email addresses and contact details. Remember, both the Northern Racing College and the British Racing School run a number of Category A amateur riders training and assessment days throughout the year.